Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meer Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn about how to solve sums based on Newton's forward difference interpolation under the topic numerical analysis. Now, we will start this video with a small brief introduction about what is interpolation. Thereafter, we will see what are the steps in order to solve Newton's forward difference interpolation using the formula method. And thereafter, we will be solving one sum so that the entire topic is registered in the mind. So, chalo, let us see what do you mean by interpolation. Okay, now let us try to understand in simple what does interpolation means. Interpolation means obtaining the value of the function, say, as y is equal to fx for any intermediate value of its argument. In simple term, for a set of value of x equals to 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, if fx is to be obtained for x equals to 7, then it is known as interpolation. Now, to put that in simple words, if they have given, if the question has given us a set of values of x and they are asking us to find the value of x which is not present in the set but it comes between the numbers or within the set then that is nothing but interpolation for example in the sum in the in this example where they gave us the value of x is 2 4 6 8 and 10 and then they're asking us to find the value of x when it is 7 now 7 comes between 2 and 10 so it is somewhere in between the set this is known as interpolation now there are different methods of interpolation. So here is given that there are two ways in which interpolation can be solved. Number one, by using Newton's forward difference interpolation formula or number two, Newton's backward difference interpolation formula. Now in this video, we are only going to learn about how to solve sum based on interpolation keeping Newton's forward difference interpolation formula. So now let us see what is Newton's forward difference interpolation and how we need to solve and what are the various steps that we have to follow in order to solve and get the final answers based on an example sum. Okay, now in this video we are going to learn about Newton's forward difference interpolation and how to solve the sum based on Newton's forward difference interpolation. Now, in order to solve such kind of sum, okay, there are two steps that we need to follow. Number one, we need to prepare the forward difference table. The proforma is given below. We have the x and y. Then we have to find, you know, the difference or you can call it a delta y, delta square y, delta cube, delta 4 and so on. Now, delta y is nothing but the first forward difference. Delta square y is nothing but the second forward difference. Then we have the third forward difference. Next, fourth forward difference and so on. It depends on the question, okay, how many uh, differences they require. Okay, how, many, how many difference or how many forward differences they require. Based on that, your sum or your, ta your table can be created. That's step number one. Second, we need to find the Newton's forward difference of the interpolation based on the formula. So there is one formula that we'll have to use after preparing the table. Okay, so the formula says, you know, the formula states that, the formula states that fx is equal to y0 plus p into delta y0 plus p into p minus 1 upon 2 factorial into delta square y0 plus p into p minus 1 into p minus 2 upon 3 factorial into the third difference or the third forward difference and so on. And similarly, you can if you have another, uh, you know, another forward difference, so it would be p into p minus 1, p minus 2, p minus 3 upon fourth factorial into the fourth forward difference and so on so if you look carefully if you look carefully is it goes like you know you it's go like zero factorial number one two factorial three factorial four factorial and so on okay and the numerator jumps in the way p 
So in the very first, it doesn't have any value of p. Then it becomes p. Then it becomes p into p minus one. Then p into p minus one into p minus two, and then p into p minus one, p minus two, p minus three, and so on. Where your p is equal to x minus x zero upon h. Now, how this formula will be applicable? How to use this particular formula in the sum? We will see that now. Okay, so just have to remember in order to solve Newton's forward difference interpolation, there are two steps. Number one, we'll have to create a table which will figure out our forward differences, and thereafter we need to use the formula from the values that we have got from the table. Okay, now let us see the very first sum. Using the following table, find f one point five using Newton's forward difference formula. They are giving us the value of x and y, and they are asking us to find the value of f x when x is equal to one point five using Newton's forward difference formula. Now let us see how to solve that sum. Step number one. We need to first find the forward difference table. The table is in front of you all. We have x, y, first forward difference, second, third, and fourth forward difference. Since the value of x is given as zero, one, two, three, and four. So now let us see. Let us see. Substituting the value and let us see how to fill the forward difference table. Now the value of x is given to us. The first value is zero. Now always remember, uh, while solving the sum based on forward differences, you need to always leave a line while creating the difference table. So your first value of x was zero. Next is one. Next is two. Then we have three, and lastly four. Similarly, we need to note down the values of y, zero, five. Twenty, forty-five, and eighty. Now let us see how to create the forward difference table. Very simple. First, we need we are finding the first forward difference. That is nothing but the difference between the values of x zeros. So that is phi minus zero, which comes to phi. Next. Twenty minus five, which comes to fifteen. Next is forty-five minus twenty, which comes to twenty-five. Eighty minus forty-five, which comes to thirty-five. So that's the difference. Okay, that is how we need to find the forward differences. Now, while going ahead, finding the second, or, you know, forward difference, we have to look at the first forward column. Again, find the differences between the two consecutive values. So fifteen minus five is ten. Twenty-five minus fifteen is ten. Thirty-five minus twenty-five is again ten. Now we go ahead for the third forward difference. Ten minus ten zero, and again ten minus ten we have zero. Lastly, lastly, in order to find the last value, again zero minus zero will again give you the final value as zero. This is how you usually prepare your forward difference table. It will always be tapering, okay, tapering to a single point. So that is step number one where we need to create the forward difference table. Okay, now after solving the table, we'll start with a step number two. Now first we'll just substitute. Uh, we'll just note down the values what we have already found. Very first, we need to note down the value of x zero. X zero is nothing but the very first value of x. In this case, the value of x zero is zero. Next, we need to find the value of x. Now, x is something that we are asked to find. So, f x may x given is one point five. So, we note it down. Next, we need to find the value of p. P ka formula is. X minus x zero upon h. So here we need to again find the value of h. H is nothing but the difference between the two consecutive x value. Now the difference between zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, and four. There's only one number ka difference. So your h is one. Now let us substitute all these values in uh, in the formula of p and get the value of p. So it would be x that is one point five 
minus x0 which is 0 upon h1 so our p value in the sum is 1.5 itself after getting the value of p now we will be using newton's formula so we we'll write here by using newton's formula formula states that fx is equal to y0 plus p into delta y plus p into p minus 1 2 factorial into delta square y plus p into p minus 1 into p minus 2 upon 3 factorial into delta cube y and so on depending on whatever numbers are given to us okay now substituting the values okay so let us see now we will write here substituting the values now let us see the values now we are have to we have to find fx when your x is 1.5 now applying into the formula y0 meaning the first value of y the first value of y is 0 itself so it will be 0 plus p that is 1.5 multiplied by the first delta of y so the first delta y is 5 the value is 5 so it will be 1.5 into 5 plus p that is again 1.5 multiply by p minus 1 so that will be 1.5 minus 1 upon 2 factorial into uh, delta square y ka first value which is 10 into 10 okay plus again now, now, now when you go again so it will be plus p into p minus 1 minus uh, into p minus 2 upon 3 factorial into the first value of delta cube so which is 0 so now if you look carefully eventually if you look carefully the value would be 0 itself because any number multiplied by 0 the final answer will give you 0 only so it will be plus you know whatever you multiply because your delta cube is 0 and your delta raised to the power of 4 is also 0 so your answer would have been 0 itself okay it would be 0 plus 0 itself because we have to go up to the fourth part the values will be 0 so I am directly noting it down as 0 so you are not wasting time substituting in a value because at the end of the day when you are going to multiply with you know delta cube y it will be again 0 so now this comes up to 1.5 into 5 comes to 7.5 plus 1.5 minus 1 is 0 0.5 into 1.5 divided by 2 after that whatever answer you get into 10 when you will substitute and when you will solve this value your answer should come to around 3.75 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0 so now we are not considering that so our final answer 7.5 plus 3.75 is 11.25 so the value of fx when your x is 1.5 is equal to 11.25. This is how you all have to solve sum based on Newton's forward difference from the data which has been given. Okay, I hope everyone have understood this. Very simple. You have to first solve the table. Then just substitute the value into the formula and get the final answer. With that, Newton's forward difference interpolation sum comes to an end.